okay if we wait a couple minutes or no? Okay. We can, we yeah, get through, we, we'll can, we can knock out the first few things. We can knock out some. But we don't need them until four. All right. We could go ahead and start in like 30 seconds. We'll take care of minutes and things like that. Minutes and you pay some people. Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, welcome to the Elementary School Building Committee uh, for September 8th, 2015. So uh, here we are. Uh, we have uh, some. Uh, I don't see anybody here uh, for community input, but if anyone wants to show up, we're at 77 uh, Main Street in the basement at HCAM Studio, uh, live uh, on uh, Monday, uh, on Tuesday, the uh, 8th of September. Uh, we uh, usually have a portion of the meeting for community input when people are here for that, but we'll take it whenever it comes. And uh, next on the agenda is uh, minutes. So I believe we have some minutes from the August early first August uh, meeting and August 4th August 4th thanks so move the um, August 4th minutes as written second okay any discussion all in favor aye, aye. 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 anybody opposed or abstaining no so uh, we've got <coughs> one two three four five six votes yeah Next, uh, I believe we have some bills uh, to take care of. So on the first bill from Yaris and Harrington, um, there was an additional amount that should not be included that Ralph and Norman were working on getting a revised invoice from them. I believe all it will be doing is taking this amount out. So would you like me to to say the adjusted amount? Yeah, first, I'd like to thank you for reviewing the invoices in such detail, and it's kind of a, a reflection of what we're doing here, is looking at every row, every every balance, and uh, this one didn't add up, so uh, thank you, Pam, for identifying that, and if you want to make a motion uh, subtracting that portion of the amount, that so should I move, work. Um, we approve invoice number 2005041 from Yaris and Harrington, LLP, dated June 29, 2015, in the amount of $2,692.50. Second. Second. Any discussion? I guess the only discussion I'd add is um, if, if it turns out they need a new invoice number, we'll revote at a future date. But, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay. Anything else? John, John Weaver. Weaver. The move we approve invoice number 2005087 from Miaris and Harrington LLP dated July 7, 2015, in the amount of $406.50. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> abstaining or opposed? Okay. <coughs> Um, I move that we approve invoice number CPM 44-13 from Compass Project Management dated 8-31-2015 the amount of $33,587.55. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? No. Okay. I move we approve invoice number 000 -0009 from DRA dated September 2nd, 2015 the amount of $87,120 even. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I, 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 I have a quarter. Let's give it to Mike. Uh, Mike got the uh, last one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mike got the last one. I think we out. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Okay. All right. That takes care of bills. Um, uh, Jeff, uh, do you want to give us a summary of uh, what happened in Boston at the conference last week? Absolutely. Okay. Um, well, some so of us were there, but for those who weren't. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, picking up where we left off with this committee, that was back the, uh, on uh, the August 4th meeting. So at that point, you had voted to approve the schematic design submission. Um, that package went into the MSBA, and it took a couple of weeks to review it, make sure all the details was, was in there, I's were dotted and T's were crossed. Um, they reviewed the budget in detail and gave us their comments back for clarification. 
and then called us in for a meeting to review what's known as the scope and budget, at which point you, know, you basically talk about the details of the numbers, how the reimbursement is affected with the town, and, um, and what the deal ultimately will be, which will move forward to their board meeting. So the good news is the project is being recommended to go to the MSBA's board meeting, um, which it will be held on September 30th. At that point, um, this project will be endorsed by the Mass School Building Authority and voted on by their board. Um, after the approval of that board meeting, um, it will then come back to the town for a funding approval vote um, that we're targeting in November of this year. Um, the good news is that um, you know the reimbursement numbers came back favorable um, for what was submitted and shown previously to the Board of Selectmen meeting in July, so the number is slightly higher than what was shown to the town publicly at the end of July. <laughs> well, the, uh, the, the as, as expected, uh, got when good we went into this, the uh, $600,000 for the feasibility studies, recall when we secured town meeting uh, funding for that, we pointed out that the, the, the rules are typically that they don't fund feasibility studies when it's your second shot. So as this is for us and as expected, uh, that that's how it fell out for us is uh, they, they didn't fund the 600000 reimbursement. We had hoped they'd see the light. But they we did. hoped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they did treated us well on the reimbursement. And it, in equalization, wasn't it such that we had other costs that took us to the max anyway? So it, it's just really a, yeah. a current cash issue versus a future cash issue. Yeah, that's correct. Correct. Yeah. yeah, had they approved it, other things would be over their yeah. various caps and... Um, Restrictions that there, yeah, right. And we also were reimbursed for the prior feasibility study, that correct? It's right. correct, but mm -hmm. they didn't care about that. <laughs> no, I'm saying, in terms yes. of we, right. you know, there's the potential they could come back and say, Wait, <clears throat> okay, any, any other questions on that? It's a you know, it's a significant. Milestone right yes. headed to mm -hmm. September 30th, which is the real um, board level approval. Yes, and, and it was favorable. I mean, they were they were they mentioned and actually complimented the design team and the project team and the, the client about this submission. That you know their comments were very minor um, compared to other towns and, uh, and dis districts that actually make submissions. So that was positive feedback given to us. Right. Yeah, I want to thank the the entire committee, including the extended team at DRA and Compass, for getting us there because they were. Uh, you know, they did seem impressed and were complimentary of the quality of <coughs> the submission that they reviewed. And they described uh, what we uh, proposed to them and that they're ready to recommend approval on as um, what, in their words, kind of a, a tight design, meaning there wasn't any waste in there, which was good to hear. Will or has it already been posted, the agenda and then that which they distributed at the meeting? Uh, no, they have not sent us their agenda for the board meeting on the 30th yet. No, the one we had for the meeting. The past. The oh, the, the one, one on September no. 3rd. Oh. Will that be posted so that neighbors and friends and everybody can read it and um, see the the money and how it was yeah, allocated? Yeah, yeah. And and so yeah, so the, the money is in the meeting packet, but yeah, we can post that on the project website. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it was quite extensive, and to everybody's credit, it was uh, done in the time frame allotted. So the MSBA did a good job, too. Yeah, yeah. true. Jeff, can you um, talk a little? So we've got this move to the September 30th meeting, which is great, but there were a couple of key takeaways that actions, we need to yeah. do, actions that we need to follow up on. Can we talk about those? Sure. Um, summarizing for us. Yep. Um, so they, they're looking for updates from the town on some of the open items that were discussed at the previous submission back in April. Um, most notably, what the town is going to do with the reuse study of the existing center school. And what they're looking there for is an update and a timeline as to how the town will be addressing the reuse of that building. Uh, another item is um, now that we're anticipating the approval at September 30th, what are the dates uh, for a town meeting, uh, special town meeting, and the election vote that will go with it um, so they can then line things up for their future schedules as well. Um, the third takeaway um, was uh, response to their comments. So they did send us the minor comments, 
and the response to those comments are due tomorrow. Uh, DRA sent over a draft of that review, which uh, Compass is in the process of editing, and we'll get that into them, uh, which is addressing some of the more uh, rudimentary items about uh, square footage program questions that were there. We have the, it's 120 days from the September 30th Correct. to secure local approval, so okay. essentially special town meeting and election. Correct. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. And, and, and with uh, sorry, John. And two other things I think they emphasized when we go to the town: do not combine this project with any other funding. Um, so we want to make sure of that, and that um, they expect no significant changes in the schematic design. John, on that first one, can you share what your interpretation of that is? Do you mean not in the same article or additional articles? Just to yes, be clear with this. In the same article, right? Okay. It could be not article. not the same night or the, the same <laughs> right, budget. Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> we get all of us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Did it just to, we do have 120 days from September 30th for a town to approve it or uh, ratify it, but our whole schedule is built yeah. on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't want yeah. people to think that we can just go 120 days and still keep the end date. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. With with Compass's input, <coughs> we've, uh, we've recommended the. Uh, dates of uh, September, I mean, November 9th for special town meeting, and I think it was the 23rd for uh, a, a, a ballot vote. Oh. But uh, I've uh, put that in a formal request to the town manager and chair of the board of selectmen I uh, sent today. Yeah, I would, did, did you? For the selectmen to confirm. Formal request? It is. I, okay. Yeah. You should consider that a formal request. Uh, and I sent it via email around. You don't want to write in your blood or anything. Just that's good enough. As long as it is submitted two months in advance. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Get <laughs> under the wire. Ready as the And as Joe alluded to, that's in order to stay on track for a September opening of 2018, and so that's why um, the dominoes need to fall in a row with a November town meeting. We do need to talk about proprietary specs at some point. We don't need to do this one. Okay. We need an architect for that. So we're going to make notes. Read them. Anything else, Jeff or Tim? No, I think that covers the MSBA and the, the major updates that we've had this month. Okay. Um, the uh, September 30th board meeting, I guess, is one where we'd want to attend. In person and yep. invite somebody from the selectmen or other parts yeah. of the town. Of yeah, I mean, I don't think in mass I would have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, there's other, but usually three or four people from the district come and yeah. they do ask the district to speak. Um, so we would want to give them who's going to speak. Typically, it's the superintendent and somebody yeah. from the town, or the chairman of the building committee, or something. And if and they also will invite the local state rep and the senator. Okay. Good, so keep us posted on those yeah. uh, deadlines for those lists, and we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. Anything else, Mike, on takeaways? Oh, I think that, okay. was, that was good. That was a good meeting. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, my takeaway is just that, you know, we, uh, this is a partnership with MSBA. I mean, they're, they're funding a big chunk of this, and uh, as tedious as, as the process can be <coughs> or seem, uh, it's actually for our benefit. I think we've come up with a pretty uh, tight design because of the feedback we've gotten along the way from MSBA. So you know, I'm grateful for their participation. Um, Rob, uh, yes. you've been doing a lot of thinking about communication well, over the last two years <laughs> and especially the last couple months. So um, I wanted to uh, give you a chance to kind of share uh, what your thoughts are <coughs> for this committee's communication mm -hmm. and other outside okay. communication between now and uh, presumed November uh, town meeting ballot. Sure. So, <clears throat> obviously, uh, having all the numbers and everything together for the uh, for the actual submission is, is important, but also having the town behind this is really important. So we need to have all of these things that we've been you know, kind of chatting about and jotting down on separate pieces of paper over the last year, few years down in the one master plan that's going to tell us how we're going to actually get to the special town meeting and 
um, a, a plan that's going to put us in a place where when we see people filing into the auditorium, we're going to be comfortable that they, as many people as possible, have, have heard what we're doing um, and you know understand the numbers and just understand what this total solution is. So um, I started compiling, and it's in it's in the packet. Hopefully, people have it. I've got a couple extras if people don't. People don't have wait. Hold on. Is that it? There we are. People need them. Thanks. Um, so I started putting all this stuff together, and one of the other things that we did um, to kind of make sure that we had all of our bases covered was we wanted to reach out to the to the community to, uh, a little bit to find out, you know, what what sorts of things would you want us to be doing that maybe you haven't seen us do yet. Um, so we we talked to a bunch of folks who had attended our previous workshops over the last uh, over the last year year and a half. And we had a bit of a brainstorming session, and a lot of the things that we uh, got from that brainstorming session have been wrapped into this plan too, because there were some really some really great ideas of different organizations we could be reaching out to, or just other uh, other other uh, activities that we should be considering. Um, so I don't really know what the best way is to go through this. Um, really, what we have, you know, up at the top, we talk about how there should be. A, let me take a step back. So I have it broken up into separate types of categories. One is live programs. So live programs would be things that we, you know, are either up talking or, um, or you know, we're, uh, we sort of install ourselves somewhere to talk to people. But these would be things where, you know, people can interact with us one on one. Um, examples of these include um, a road show type activity, which I know Tim suggested at our last big meeting, where we have a presentation that we can bring to to various different groups in town, whether it's uh, you know the Parks and Rec Department, which I think you, you sort of already did, um, you know the the, uh, the Republican and Democratic committees, um, half the HPTA, you know all sorts of different uh, entities in town. HCAM has offered to record that for us and actually play it on somewhat of a loop leading up to town meeting, which is great too. Um, so that's something that we should you know consider you know putting together and having ready in the in the very short term. Um, Things like appearing on the uh, HCAM's coffee break um, is something that I think is in process of being scheduled. Um, Pam's helping us out with that. Um, having office hours at Waterfresh and Colella is just times where we just sort of plant ourselves down and let people come in and chat with us about the questions that they might have. So it's less of a presentation that we're giving, but more of an interaction that we're providing. Um, and then there's always the opportunity for things, uh, some of the more familiar things like neighborhood coffees, which I think is something that has been done at other um, for other initiatives that are similar to this one. Then you have things like, aside from live programs, you can have installations. So places uh, where we could be potentially putting up um, posters, handouts, sandwich boards, um, taking advantage of sandwich boards on the town common, talking to the HPTA about how, whether or not we can um, lease some of their sandwich boards, because they have one on just about every corner. Um, <laughs> The handheld signs that we that can be uh, created for ballot questions, um, community flyers for the different uh, businesses in town, like like the uh, the daycares, the the pizzerias, Yoga Beach, those sorts of places, um, and then things like press releases. So we'll want to probably put out uh, as we formalize numbers and formalize dates for town meetings. We'll probably want to create something that we can have. Uh, the the, uh, the town manager's media list mail out for us so that we can get some publicity there. Um, and some of the ongoing efforts are detailed here too. So continuing to post things on Facebook um, and we need to talk a bit about you know what sort of an advertising budget we might want to have for that. Um, posting things out on Twitter, taking advantage of uh, some of our partners who um, are contributors to the Real Housewives forums, the Moms Group forums. Um, one of the uh, activities that we got out of the brainstorming session with the community was the, uh, the idea of a uh, column in the Hopkinton Independent where we could have a, a basically a space that we could, that we could uh, post things out to and all the issues leading up to the town meeting where you know, maybe it's frequently asked questions or just, you know, just 101 about what it is we're doing. Um, so these are some of the things that I've highlighted on this uh, sheet along with uh, the timelines that I, you know, uh, again, this is draft, so I'm looking for input. Um, timelines as to when I think these activities would be the most effective. Um, I threw some names down as to who could be some of the people who are involved in them. Um, and uh, some of the things that we might need for some of the activities, you know, for example, uh, for a road show, we might need um, posters, a presentation, and handouts. So I try to have that detailed there, and then a status column of whether or not it's 
um, and progress complete, not started. Um, so hopefully folks have had a chance to glance at it briefly or you know, just from me talking right now, if you have any questions about what I have here, what I'm missing. This is excellent. This is excellent. Thank you. Uh, does anybody have any uh, specific reaction or response or suggestion or feedback? I, um, Mr. Chair, yes. I think the first one I would get out oh, there, um, if, if we can do a column in the independent, is um, why do I need to vote for this? Mm -hmm. Because somebody who I expected to know that this project was not yet voted upon thought that it was a done deal and we were building a school. Mm. Um, right. So I think we really need to say, yes, you voted on the feasibility, you voted on the land purchase, now we need to vote on the school. Yeah. Yep. Good point, yeah. I mean, we, we, uh, we've been communicating all along, but uh, there's a lot of things being communicated at the same time as people are trying to reach. So mm -hmm. we have to keep uh, reminding people where we are, what's next. And there's still uh, the big kahuna ahead of us. Yeah, the biggest of kahunas. The, the one thing I don't see, Robin, mm -hmm. perhaps it's here in just some other format is, and I know we have a, an active parent teachers organization. I, w I would love to think that they would partner with us on this thing. I'd like to see their name in here somewhere. I'd love to have them do a little bit of the heavy lifting as well, um, since obviously they're advocates of the educational system at town. I'm not sure how we do that. Perhaps mm -hmm. we approach whoever is the big right. kahuna initially, and then we talk to them and we talk about how we could do that. And uh, But uh, I know they have a lot of assets that they could help us in terms of getting the word out as well. Mm -hmm. um, but um, that would be the only thing. Otherwise, Rob, it looks great. I think it's great. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. So I guess something that, that I'm thinking um, could be useful is additional installations at places other than just the center school. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the list, yes, I think the idea about the HPTA is a really important one. And I know we've talked at other town meetings about providing babysitting, just ways of getting lots of people out, but understanding that we're having, our voters are, are reaching far more than just the school age population. Right. So I'm thinking about, I mean, I would be very happy to represent the school, uh, the schools, because I see Lauren down here as she should be for the center school piece. Um, for example, uh, arranging for a presentation at the senior center. Yep. Um, and other places, other organizations like that, um, whoever we can get on a meeting. Um, the <coughs> chamber, for example, I'm a member, so I could do a presentation at the chamber. Um, any of those kinds of places so that the conversation, the questions, we're inviting them, mm -hmm. we're answering them proactively, but at the same time really um, pumping people up to come out to vote. So anything where I can be helpful in, in getting out a communicating message, particularly around the educational program. Yep. And for me, that's what I think people need to continue to hear and, and has been reinforced is that this building is being built for little people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, no, there's no ever um, any, any plan that it should be anything but that. And just I think it's important to reinforce that message. Yeah, thank you, Kathy. I think that you, you know, as superintendent, should be you know, a key participant at any time we have one of these uh, forums that are on this list. So, so and I, uh, sorry, go ahead. I, so I, I absolutely agree with that. But one of the things I was thinking in looking at this was, um, in the road shows, we have 18 organizations listed right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I stress right now because mm -hmm. people are probably going to look at this and come up with a slew more that we should meet with. Mm -hmm. And so we'll share um, the load, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's kind of where I was where I was getting to was, I, and I think that the road shows and you know as we, we should obviously not just Dr. McLeod, but potentially look to expand this bulleted list of yeah. the who. And so mm -hmm. I guess the question would be not put anybody on the spot here, but it's something that we can follow up on, is if anybody, if there's anybody who doesn't want to do these road shows, because I think right. if all members, if as many members of the committee are as comfortable doing them as possible, we can hit the most organizations. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah. we're going to be doing, you know, I mean, there's no way you can do 20 plus of these in a month and a half, or a couple right. months if, if we all 
Yeah. And there's sort of two tiers to it too. The first tier is um, we need. I think we should be reaching out to these groups as opposed to waiting for them to come to us. We've been very Absolutely. lucky. In fact, so far we've actually had the, uh, the the Hopkinton Moms Group has come to us asking us to give uh, more than one presentation for them, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we're we're at a point where we should be aggressive in trying to get on their calendars versus waiting for um, them to come to us. So we should, um, you know, along with assigning names for people who might be able to help actually give the presentations. Um, talk about how we can actually get on these people's calendars as soon as possible. Uh, excellent. Yeah, and, and also, and maybe I'll ask Compass for some advice too. But uh, you know, we we would need to have a uh, kind of uh, a, a deck and talking track that can be repeated, who regardless whoever is presenting it. And um, uh, also, uh, curious how maybe in other towns. They go about doing this. Do they have a team of people from the committee present, or one or well, two? Is the superintendent always there, or a principal in their stead, or how does that work? So the the um, <coughs> so the experience obviously it depends on the community and how and the comfort level of the committee. The in a um, couple of the towns we've wor worked, and I think what seems to have worked best is that um, a limited because. 20 minutes is what you want in a presentation. You don't want 30, right. and you don't want 10 because you don't get enough because there's a mm -hmm. lot of information. Um, and, you know, a lot of transfers between people doesn't really work in 20 minutes, so one or two people even I think is a good idea. And I, I, I say when I was thinking of this earlier, I was thinking maybe two or three, but I think John makes a good point. There's going to yeah, be 20 so or 30 right. of these. It wouldn't be bad. To, it, it's always good to have two people at an event just because right. somebody can answer questions. So, you know, even if one presents the, the slide deck, somebody's there to support the questions that might come. It's just good support. Yeah. And I think, um, so I think if you, if you picked a roster of two people as a team, and you scheduled how they were to go to these things with a, the same slide deck of 20-minute presentation. And obviously, people get asked questions that they don't feel comfortable answering for some reason or another. They just take it down, and they said, right. what's your name and address, and uh, we'll get back to you. But I think I was mentioning I think it would be good for a core group of people to get together and create the slide deck. Hmm. Uh, not, not, it's, it's not something that's really conducive to a giant committee doing. Right. Um, and I can certainly help you. I mean, generally speaking, they follow sort of a similar thing, need, you know, why are you here process to get to where you got the solution, which is the design, the budget. You know, we need to get a tax impact done, actually, you know, that's so, pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is something we could ask uh, the town manager to do or the town treasurer. Um, and then an upcoming, you know, schedule of the votes. You know, just to you know, just to remind people of the schedule. And um, I would be careful between this committee does these presentations. It's not an advocacy presentation. That's the PAC's job to to hold the signs and do all of that. And it's not really the job of this committee to advocate the project. Obviously, you're going to speak in favor of it because <laughs> you wouldn't be on this yeah. committee if you didn't. But you don't telling for. Encouraging people to vote in favor of it is not the job of this committee. It's just to say this is we certainly endorse it. We support it. This is why we support it. In, in fact, in particular regarding the ballot vote, uh, we're prohibited from advocating right. a vote either way on the on the ballot initiative. So I wouldn't coordinate a lot. The relationship with the PAC would be more of providing them with information, as you would with anybody mm -hmm. who asked, and um, that's I think more or less their job to do all the holding signs and ballot box counting, you know, ballot, whatever gets done politically to get support for the project, making calls. So I, I would say one of the steps you might want to do is just create a team to put this, what the presentation should look like that could meet with the architect and ourselves and kind of talk that through. And okay. I can bring a couple of examples from other towns. and. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so the, the, the team of two, I think, sounds good I think it's a, again you don't want a really long presentation but you want the ability to work off of each other um, I, but I, and this maybe this bears out in the presentation but as I think about it I think what might be good and 
uh, Kathy, we can talk about how this this structures because right now the only <coughs> people on the committee from the district or are, are from educational side of the district are you and, and Lauren. Mm -hmm. um, but it feels like it would be good to have one person who can really speak to the educational model of the school, mm -hmm. and then maybe another person who can speak more to the process and, and the project because I think you're right we can take down questions we're not comfortable answering but I think those are the two areas that you pretty much have to have somebody in the room to be able to answer the questions if you want to have credibility mm -hmm. so I don't know if we can think about deputizing mm -hmm. the bobs of the world to potentially help cover too um, or if you and Warren can do 20 of these <laughs> yeah. So it needs to be somebody with well, elementary expertise. Oh, um, good point. Sorry. So yeah. I, I will say that this is a high priority, obviously, right now. Uh, the timing is excellent because we haven't gotten really deep into the budget process yet, and uh, it's very important for me to prioritize my time around this initiative. Um, so my suggestion, I don't know if you want to get into this this tonight at all, Joe, but even you know, going through and, and having people say, well, I'll contact wh whoever, and really starting to generate some dates on this quickly. If we divide up this list tonight, mm -hmm. people can go off and start getting commitments um, if, if, if there's time for that. Um, and then before we leave tonight, deciding the time to get together to get, because we, we obviously want to get going on this by by the third week of September, I'm thinking. I agree. So, yeah, no, I agree. That's, that's good. I, I think. Um, <clears throat> We sh we have a lot of the content, Tim. Already, right? I mean, oh, yeah, we just, mm -hmm. it's, it's really similar. Very similar. Down and but it uh, you know, it's clearly I want uh, Rob there, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I can be there. Um, uh, then, um, Rob, is there a way to kind of share a list of the the groups we want to reach out to with the full committee on Google Docs or something? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Leave a column blank for people to hmm. put their name if yep. they uh, have a particular interest mm -hmm. in updating that that group. You know, it might work. You know, each of us has contacts and relationships with different parts of the community, so that might be a good way to see who's most comfortable presenting to each group. Yep. Okay. Something like that. John, hey, Joe, I, sorry. Go ahead. I just I wanted to know if, if the committee feels that it would be appropriate to do some of these during the day. Do they, yeah, I does think the committee so. think it all needs to happen at night? I think some of them are going to have to be during the day. Mm -hmm. Just depends on the audience. Okay. Right. I'm going to ask a question. You know, first a technical one. Um, is there a minimum number of votes that are needed to pass this, or and is it a majority, or is it another percentage? Two thirds, right? Two thirds of town meeting majority at uh, the ballot. Right. Okay. Back into the minimum vice based on the quorum required for town meeting. Right? Well, that, and what is the quorum? A special. Also, one hundred. That was almost two hundred. Special. Is it real? I I was looking at it. It's not. I think it. I think it's. I think it's two hundred. Okay, and then the, it's leading to the question: Does anybody feel a swelling of any opposition group per se out there, like there was the last time? <coughs> No, no, not at the moment. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm wondering if there's somehow we can, you know, find out who this opposition component or group might be, and proactively, you know, meet with them. Because that's worth two votes. What I just heard. Yeah. You change thanks, one. Thanks, that's John. Good. Mike, what do you? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I agree with Rob. I, I, the last one was just different in so many levels that we don't, this isn't any way similar to that. There's no lightning rods that are sticking out there that we're going to get burned with. But um, <clears throat> speaking to, to Compass's uh, input regarding um, w what this is going to cost the average taxpayer, that's the thing mm -hmm. that's going to make or break us. Um, I think in, in the very, very short term, we should meet with the town treasurer, the town manager, whoever makes those decisions and comes up with those numbers. Um, this year, we're, we're kind of at the short end of the stick of the perfect storm. We're, we're building a new, new DPW, we're building a new library, we bought some extra land. We spent a lot of money last town meeting. And now we're going back to the special town meeting to spend more. Now, I've heard from more than, more than a dozen people saying, where are we going to get the money? How am I going to afford to pay for this? Uh, so we, we have to be armed with what the tax impact is going to be. 
But also, <clears throat> thinking further and, and talking with my wife, is we also have to, should at this juncture, start to get creative as to how we're going to finance the project. And, and the discussion should be around whether it's wise to finance it for 20 years as we normally finance other projects, or should we finance it for longer? It's a 50-year it's a building. Um, true, the interest, you know, gets to you, but the overall impact to the person, the immediate impact is, is far less. But I think only the people at the treasurer's office and the town manager's office and, and um, uh, perhaps um, they're the ones that can provide us with the information because this is the information, at least in my mind, is going to be critical. I don't think anybody has second-guessed us on the work we've put into the project what the project is for, the fact that we need it. Now the big question that I'm getting all the time is, how are we going to pay for it? We being the taxpayers. And, and we've got to do some really good work in terms of uh, working out the financing so that's hopefully you know, people can get their arms that, around that's it. That's where I'm coming from. I mean, whether and that's a that's a, the group a, we've a, got a known yep. uh, uh, collaboration versus just uh, you know, I, you know, multiple people, multiple levels. Yeah. I, there's no group out there that says we don't need it. So the effort that we're talking about, how will that address that? I mean, well, all these presentations then need that information. We need that information. you just uh, sooner out. rather than later. That's why I, I, I bring it up now. Yeah. And, and, um, and Compass realizes that as well, because that's the key question. And, <clears> and, um, always for every major project that's always come up. Usually it doesn't get pre presented until town meeting or in a handout just before. But we're in a place where we could present it two months before, right? you know. So, but we've also got to, you know, depend upon the town, um, the, the people that do this stuff financially to be creative, to, to, to think a little bit outside the box because, again, we just happened to hit with the perfect storm of spending money in the last, you know, six months, mm -hmm. and and we're going to ask them to spend another thirty-one million dollars, and and uh, so the average guy is going to go back and say, you know, I say, geez, I love living in Hopkins, I just can't afford to live anymore. Everybody says that, of course, but and but we we've got to be creative. I think I think we're going to be able to convince everybody we've done the right thing. We're not wasting money. We're we're doing all the right stuff. It's just that, that intangible thing that, where, mm -hmm. honey, we can't afford this anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's what will kill us if, if we don't do a good job, I, I think. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I, I agree with your assessment of the community perspective on the project and the, the potential concerns around the, 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 the financing of it. So um, can we have, uh, Pam, can we ask? Well, I just wanted to with, do a clarification. Yeah. So the article will be for the full forty-five million. Correct. Yes. The tax impact, though, is not for that full amount. Right. So we need to figure out the tax impact on that lower number. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. In, fa in fact, that lower number is spelled out in the spreadsheet that was given to us last week, and and uh, a substantial amount of that money that they projected. We pay. We've already spent. Right. We we bought the land. Right. Uh, we you know we, 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 we funded the six hundred thousand for this feasibility study. So that comes off of that number. Right. Um, but you're right. We we have a number to work with. We just have to go to the to the right people at town hall, and and you know just to do it right, not to do it sneaky, just to do it right, and 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 think outside the box in terms of financing. Because if we just go back to the old, we'll just bond it twenty years and da 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 da. It'll be a big number. Well, there is the opportunity to bond it over 30, 30. years. I think so. Yeah, there is. Yeah. John Graziano. So, so I agree with that wholeheartedly in terms of not necessarily opposition, but issues that I think could create challenge for passing this. It's not unrelated to the project budget. We need to at least be along a process on what we're going to do with the building, with the center school. Because I think that's going to be a question we don't want to not have any kind of answer to on town meeting floor. So I know, kind of looking over here, I know that that's that we we need to get the selectmen engaged in in that process, um, because I in the school committee wants to engage in that as well. But we need to at least have started the process because we can't be on town meeting floor and kind of shrug when they say what are we going to do with the center school building. 
because I think that's something that will dr drive people against this. That's a good point, John. I kind of like this approach to this discussion because we're not looking at, hey, everything's good. We're trying to uncover mm. what could yeah. go wrong and yeah. get ahead of it, right? Yeah. So there's a couple of challenges that could come up. Uh, another that I see is the uh, the master planning of the whole EMC park through Tadaro. People might want to know what's the plan for that, how much is that going to cost to develop, whatever it might be. And along with that, uh, whatever happened to the traffic and calming improvements um, at the Hopkins Road entrance, um, how much is that going to cost? When's that going to happen? So those are things that I see that might come up and negatively affect us if we don't get cooperation on addressing them. We might want to discuss with the Capital Improvements Committee because the, as the taxpayer sitting here, I said, you know, the, the schools, once this one is built, we're in pretty good shape. The, the DPW are in real good shape. The library are in real good shape. The town hall is pretty much done over. Yeah, we haven't figured out what we're doing with the center school. But as far as potential future expenses, this is what the Capital Improvements Committee does. What do you have on your radar that we should remind people about that they're going to get hit with five years from now, or, or other than just the normal new bulldozer and dump truck? Um, the big stuff. And, um, you know, there's always big stuff, and hopefully it'll be a little bit further off. Right. We're, we've done the big stuff for a while. But the. Uh, Mike, It'd be so good to have that I, yeah, I, absolutely. So I was about to ask, and maybe you can help too. Could 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 Pam? Could you, as the appropriation committee member on this committee, uh, with Mike, you know, meet with Norman? Is that something you could help us set up? Could you meet with Mike and Pam and the treasurer to help start that process of the formula on the tax impact for a home? And John, uh, maybe for a full disclosure, we're, we actually have the number in front of us, right? The, yeah. the reimbursed amount, mm -hmm. and isn't it somewhere around? What is it? We should try to get the it's number out there. 20, now. It's, a, it's around twenty-nine when you back out the um, feasibility money. study and the purchase of the land. So it's because this is netted out to thirty-one, but again, there's mm -hmm. one point. There's two point four million essentially that we've already, we've already spent. spent. Yeah. So twenty-nine. Something is it? Yes, yeah. We're just looking for that number again. The average home, people can do the math themselves. So. Sometimes yeah. people put it in. Well, they use an average, whatever the average assessment was last year, and then they might have per hundred thousand, so you can calculate for your own home. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. and you know, I'd want it done, you know, in absolute values, but also in the context of other things that are coming off debt service at the yeah. same time, right? So the net kind of impact of things that we've just recently paid off. And well, this not come out. Yeah, you know, I, th I think it would be absolutely important to, although it, it could hurt us, but I, in the interest of being out there, we also ought to include what the potential impact of these new projects are and the new land purchases are as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just so everybody knows going in, not just the school. And, and, uh, and uh, so, you know, because if we don't provide that information, something somebody's certainly going to ask for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather be ahead of it than behind it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'd be I'd be happy to work with Pam and Norman and the uh, town leadership when we come up with something. And uh, but, uh, that's going to be um, something we want to do in the immediate term because that's a key element of the presentation. Yes, that we need to start getting out there in the in the immediate term too. So, um, so it, it was in the context of the community presentations for communication on the town meeting that this right. came up, and it's it's uh, apropos that it did. So, uh, w why don't we plan? Is it so, Norman? Is that a yes? You can take that with. You can help direct Mike and Pam to the right resources in town hall to start that process. The answer is yes. Um, so long as. I think we're all comfortable with the numbers as the numbers that will be used going forward. Yeah. Because I think what has um, been a challenge in the past is when numbers keep changing. Yeah. It does confuse So us. Tim, can you just so everybody's on the same page, because I believe that, that that's where we are now. Yeah, the numbers, this is the deal. This is the deal with the MSBA, so we can't let the numbers change. They're, they're locked yeah. in at this point. Great. The yeah. other suggestion. <laughs> Preparing for conversations with the Capital Improvement Committee, we need to nail down the operating costs 
understanding that this school replaces an existing school, but I think the public will still want to know sure. the, there, the right. future. We have that, or uh, Ralph actually has that in what he's done already in the operating costs for this on a square foot basis. Yes. He's calculated to a dollar per square foot, and I think he has the center school calculated similarly. Yeah, and they'll be looking for the yeah. delta between the two I suspect. So let's add to that. So it's Mike, you, Pam, and Ralph would take part in that conversation as well with whomever you recommend in town hall. And whoever you recommend for. Do we do that at the appropriation committee or? Well, we first we'd have to go to the capital improvements. That's the first stop before it comes to appropriation. Yeah. And then it would come to appropriation. And all of that needs to happen before it goes to town meeting. Yes, but just to get that estimate, is that has, that has, estimate has to can go through Yeah, those? it does not. I don't believe so. Does it? The estimated is generated through a conversation between the finance team yeah. and the project team. Great. Yeah. My understanding is my yeah. OPM team, I will sit down with the finance team and, and go through okay. the numbers. Okay. okay. So then it's a full packet when it goes to CIC and when it goes to appropriation. Yes. Great. And you'll, you, thank you for facilitating that, Norman. That's uh, something we definitely want to do. Okay. When are these meetings going to happen? Within the next month? Because if not, we should probably set them. Either we need to set them tonight now, or we need yeah. to set up. Oh, what, the appropriation of the CIC? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not thinking. I, thank you. We have to be specific. I mean, I'm thinking that tomorrow at 9 a.m., Pam's going to contact somebody to set these meetings up. So, um, and ideally, we'd like them to happen this week or early next week. You're talking we about have all the data. There's no reason to wait, yeah. right? You're you're referring to the actual going before the CIC and the appropriation. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I meant that, yeah. yeah. So I, I agree. I think the Let's meeting with the Norma and Mike and myself yeah. can start tomorrow morning. Okay. Tax impact meeting. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't think you can meet with CIC or appropriation until MSBA vote on the right. 30th of September. Right. And potentially until we have a warrant, right? Right. And yeah. and and Jamie Helen takes care of making sure everything goes th through the process, correct? The when meetings. Once the warrant gets set and setting up the meetings. I spoke with him four months ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And there is, there is a standardized process, I believe, yes? Norman, can you answer <laughs> the question? <laughs> I wish I played both. I know. <laughs> what does that smile mean? <laughs> I'm going to play against him. Norman, can you explain how you'll help us make sure that those sequence of events happens? I think it, it, it will all revolve around the discussion on the 15th. Um, Joe, I, yeah. I, I was trying to reach out to you to make sure that at least the, the formal request that you're putting together. It's submitted. It's, it's in your inbox. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we will then build a calendar around it is the outcome of the discussion on the 15th. Okay. 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 So you envision on the 15th at the Board of Selectmen's meeting, you, you'll have time allotted for this discussion with the selectmen? Yes. Okay. And we will get them to, the, the agenda will be to vote on confirming the dates and we'll have a discussion around other uh, milestone dates that have to happen, capital improvements. Y yes. And et cetera. Assuming they are is agreement to move forward, uh, hopefully that night we, the selectmen, will consider opening a, a warrant for the special target. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. So I see. Yeah. You just want to, I, I understand your situation. You, you, you uh, as town manager, have to uh, get to the point of the selectmen approving the dates of the special town meeting and uh, and election. And that's just, the, you, you, that's on the 25th. It's a couple of weeks out. Is that the next? 15th. Oh, 15th. 15th. The 15th. 15th. Okay, good. good. Next week. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, good. Pam, Mike, yeah. Ralph, uh, Tim or Jeff, I guess, will participate in that meeting. That uh, Pam, maybe you can take the lead on reaching out mm -hmm. with the finance team to get that set up for as soon as possible. Uh, now, moving back to the uh, a similar small group to yeah. kind of put together the slide deck. Uh, it's not unlike the decks that we put together for each of the community workshops to date, which Rob, you and I with Mike generally kind of led the compilation of those decks. 
Does everyone comfortably do it that way? Or, John, do you want to be part of that, too? So or? I was actually going to suggest I was going to volunteer. <laughs> Kathy? It's Kathy yes. as well. Great. Can you, can you, yeah. 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 I did. Yeah. I did. Um, yeah, because let's I think, again, I think critical components could be that educational yeah. plan, program and plan. So. Yeah. Thank you. I'm happy to. Good. So what I have then for that team is me, Tim, uh, Joe, Kathy? Yep. Okay. And Mike. Oh, and Mike, sorry. Michael. You can come too. <laughs> okay. Um, so do we want to just set up a time after Let's the just, meeting, set up a time, or do you want to do it right now? Do it after the probably do it now. All right. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. Pam, you can't do that because yours involves other people I'm not send here. I'm email when I get home. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Tim, Tim, do we do we want to kind of work around your schedule too? If well, you Friday, need to be there? Friday afternoon would be great. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you asked. Uh, Friday <laughs> somewhere. Um, maybe I should work Friday afternoons. Hold on. <laughs> uh, but I could. It's later in the afternoon. It's mm -hmm. better. I'm gonna do like three. Sure. Four o'clock. You need to. Oh, I can do four. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't matter to me. I mean, whatever you guys. No, nope. four. four is good. I just have to be at the ribbon cutting, as we all do. <laughs> oh, oh, the new fountain? <laughs> no, no, no. It's the, the three hundredth kickoff. Yeah. So four o'clock this Friday, the eleventh. That's great. Yeah. Would you like to come to my office? Is yeah. That yeah, a it's good perfect spot. spot. Okay, I'll book the conference room. <coughs> so, so I'll bring some samples. Um, I thought you were going to say treats. I'll bring some I treats. <laughs> I'll bring some treats and samples. Samples later. of treats. <laughs> Great. So we have then um, we have then a team set up to do the presentation to to put together the presentation. I'll send out later on uh, the list of potential roadshow um, recipients, and people can assign themselves to. Okay, well, I'll just to close out on that one. Uh, Jim Barrett from DRA is here. Um, Jim, your schedule's very busy, and I know you have created a lot of the visual slides that we're going to use, but I don't want to necessarily impose on your schedule to have to be there Friday at 4. But certainly if you or somebody from your team wants to participate, we welcome their participation as well. Okay. So the next thing that we should probably discuss is there's more on this plan than just you know what, uh, just this presentation. There's uh, a bunch of things that, um, that uh, Tim made mention to as things that we wouldn't necessarily do, but we would have a pack do for us or help us help us navigate. Um, so one of the um, great things that we have going for us now is that we've had a couple of people step up from the community to form said pack. Um, so Amy Cafazo and Ed Johnson have stepped up as the president and treasurer of the pack that's going to help us navigate the, uh, the different aspects of this that we, you know, just need help with because we need bodies, and then also the things that we're not specifically allowed to, to you know, weigh in on as we approach ballot times. Right. Yeah, just to be clear, the, the Office of Campaign Finance in Massachusetts prohibits uh, elected committees from, uh, or town officials from advocating a a yes vote on a ballot initiative and the, the workaround that the state has set up is that a private group can form itself as a political action committee to advocate a yes vote on a uh, on a uh, election ballot initiative so uh, so actually uh, Amy and uh, Ed are here tonight so I want to thank them personally for stepping up to do this on behalf of the community thank you um, so one of the things that we should probably should do um, at some point is to have a separate meeting, aside from just the presentation meeting, but also just sort of a how are we going to execute this plan meeting um, that would involve uh, our, our PAC as well as a smaller subset of our group, I would imagine. That would include me, I would, I would, I'm assuming you, and probably anybody else on our group who wants to be involved. Okay. Yeah, just to execute each part of the plan. Well, yeah, to talk about how we're going to how we're going to hit up a bunch of these things going forward, what people's responsibilities would be over the next mm -hmm. 
and we could, we we could talk about that at a separate meeting. We could talk about that now. I yeah, I mean, on the ongoing, I mean, you've been doing an outstanding job on Facebook and Twitter, right? So, if if you could keep doing that, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, the real house always hop. They won't let me post yeah, there. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm allowed to. Yeah. And Kelly's allowed to. So again, why don't we kind of kind of put up a revised version of this list in a format where people can put their name next sure. to a group, whether it's an ongoing activity or a presentation audience. Uh, so organize it by audience. Yeah. And then regardless of whether it's a an email to that audience or a presentation to that audience, any member of the ESPC can jot their name down in the column next to it mm -hmm. as a person who's got specific interest in connecting with that group. Right. Would that work? I, th I think that would be fine. starting point, and then yeah, and then and then you know we'll 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 wait a few days, and then if people haven't volunteered, we'll volunteer them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Tim, anything um, you want to add on that? Okay. And so yeah, okay. So then, so there's there's certain things that we have almost you know kind of specifically called out that we think that the PAC could be especially effective in um, things like contacting the voters um, directly. I, I know that we have a, I think we have a list of registered voters that we can reach out to. Um, that people have friends they can reach out to. Um, yeah, the the only thing with the PAC is um, per the the state, and I know you're being careful to do this is. Um, we're not coordinating anything the PAC does. No. But you're trying to here to present a consolidated timeline or consolidated activity list that includes things they may do. Right. Um, but we would look to the PAC to engage yeah. us as sure. they need information for any of the advocacy work they're doing. So I don't think there's anything wrong if Rob was the point person to get information to the PAC. <coughs> yeah. That's, that's, you, anybody who asks for information gets it. Even yeah. if a, even if a PAC no group showed up, they yeah. would be entitled to that information. Mm -hmm. So if Rob was going to be the point person, I think you've been clear about just avoiding anything mm -hmm. beyond that information transfer. Yeah. You know, right. Let them decide where they, yeah. how they. That's why they're a political action committee. They should decide the politics of what they do. Sure. Yeah. So Rob, I am 100% comfortable with you being the point of contact as the clerk of this committee and sharing any information that anyone in the public asks for related to this, including the PAC. So, okay. Yeah. Great. So keep doing that. We'll do. So then do we want to, uh, again, we could do this after this meeting, we could do it during, let's try to set up time uh, that we could get together with them, um, transfer that information. Would that just be me? Would that be me and you? Yeah. Uh, uh, is, is it is it form? Have they filed a form? I, I wait for them to form and then reach out to us. <laughs> I can't read that. <laughs> it looks like it's signed. Oh, okay. We need, we're missing some information that we need from you guys. For okay. So, uh, Amy, since you're here and we're here, is it information that we could provide verbally now to help yes. you move this ahead? <laughs> yes. Um, so, is there a specific name you would like or you suggest? This is probably a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, if it's <laughs> things like that, we could probably just take it offline because uh, I don't right. think we have an opinion on the yeah, name. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And which address it gets filed under? Is it mine? Okay. So. Yeah. And All right. Once I have that, I plan to take it to town tomorrow. Great. Very good. Uh, so why don't we uh, stick with the, uh, the the schedule we have, for Rob? We'll meet with. Uh, Tim and Kathy Friday anyway, and mm -hmm. uh, we could um, figure out from there if this if this uh, group gets filed by then, then we'll take it from there and schedule okay. a follow up. Sounds good. Or have them schedule a follow up if they need information from us, or they can go to you for whatever information they need. Sure. So the only other thing then that I would want to talk about um, in terms of things that we know we want to do for community outreach, well, there's a couple things. One. Um, some sort of advertising budget. I would want the committee to discuss and potentially approve some monies to be spent for outreach, the same that we did for the land purchase. Right. Um, and then the second thing would be, uh, I can't remember if it was Compass or DRA who, who uh, volunteered their services for this, but 
uh, a set of, uh, of, of the posters of the different uh, renderings, so the school renderings, the floor plans, things like that, that we could use as, at these road shows and uh, at the school installations, you know, something that we could leave somewhere where people could just kind of mill about and look at them. Um, but we'd want to get, a, a, I would think, a small handful of sets of those that we could just sort of have at our disposal to, to bring to different events. Right. So starting with that, the, the poster board style uh, exhibit that we had at the library in January, Jim, I think something like that would be really useful with different, you know, perspectives on the building. Is that something we could do again? Sure. Okay. Right. And uh, then as for advertising budget, uh, back in May uh, for the land acquisition, Rob, you did some uh, Facebook promotions, yep. right? And it was in the hundred dollar range or something, right? I think grand total, up to this point, for everything, I think we've spent less than three hundred dollars. Yeah. And that, I don't. I, I wish I had the exact number in front of me. I should have, but um, I think it was under that for everything. Right. So I would, for this piece going forward, I would say probably if I could have that as a ceiling and with almost certainly not to exceed it, or no, almost certainly not to approach it. Right. Is, right. My, is my guess, so. <laughs> right. John, that sounds familiar. Didn't you make a motion uh, back in May to, to, to spend up to or not to exceed a certain okay. amount? Of maybe I make a that motion again. that the committee approve an advertising budget um, up to $300. Second. Okay. And Jeff, does that, in your experience, sound like a reasonable amount? I mean, I know we've been trying to be conservative about what we spend on these kind of administrative tasks. Was it 300? 300, uh, yeah, and it, we've spent about 300 to date. So I was, uh, I was actually having a sidebar too about the other printing, like you've referenced sandwich boards and some other mm. postings. So you might want to add some additional money for, for that if we need to put information out there. Oh yeah, there's only factor in. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I'm not sure what, but there's a reimbursable that that DRA has, right? Their budget. I don't know. It's not. You, yeah, I mean. I mean, that's just a reimbursable cost, like any other printing cost that they would have. Um, I'm not sure you need to set a budget per se because it's not it's this is educational that you're just gonna print these boards up yeah. of the floor plans and the images and and maybe a you know a, a budget board or something. I don't know if that's something to be mm -hmm. talked about. But yeah. I don't think you need to set a budget if you just have one DRA to no, do for it that for that part for the poster board that that should be fine. Um, but this would be Facebook promotions. No, that's uh, different. Yeah, that's, uh, right. That, yeah. This might be uh, so uh, 100 flyers that we post around town. That's uh, to budget. promote uh, yeah. workshops, things like that. I think, you know, if we do the $300 at this point, we'll look yeah. at it again in another six right. weeks. Sure, we'll meet Yeah, I yeah. yeah. thought it understand. might be low, but you yeah. said yeah. that's what you right. would estimate, and we can yeah. always adjust that. And that absolutely okay. should not include the the graphics budget through reimbursable right. project costs. Okay. That'll be more than that. Great. So there's a motion, and was that seconded? Yeah. Yes. Okay, and we've had some discussion. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Nope. Who was the original motion? Yeah, second. Uh, John. 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 John Weaver. Weaver. Right, thank you. Great. Okay. I think that's all I had. That's all right now. I, I, I look at it and, and, and thank I, you, Norman. And I know what we're planning, and, and I think the communication aspect of it is great, super. To the point where I, I can't recall, I've only been here 50 years, any other committee ever doing anything <laughs> like this. Uh, that being said, there may be some mileage uh, to putting out a press release, you know, that say, look at the good thing we're doing. Um, primary not to get anybody to slap you on the back because they won't anyway, but more so that, hey, you haven't come to us. I read the article in the Boston Globe about a great thing you're doing to get your school built, and you haven't come talk to us yet, and that mm -hmm. way people we might have missed look yeah, yet. Yeah, sure we have. Um, and then there may be a certain amount of people that said, well, geez, you know, I, we want to be included in the people you talk to. And, and it would help us. And, and mm -hmm. that kind of press is free. Right. And, um, you know, we got the local things, but, you know, a lot of the bigger papers are looking for human interest things. And, of course, a lot of people are building schools and stuff. But I think, I think we're doing it a little bit differently and, and a little bit more thoroughly and much more transparent than normally. And, and I think all that is a good thing. And we should toot our own horn. And hopefully somebody will pick up on that and say, yeah, you're doing a good thing. 
Rob, I think you and I could draft something even prior yeah. to our meeting Friday that we could then review with. It, it could, certainly couldn't hurt. Yeah. Sure. It won't cost anything. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. Okay. Does that get us through the agenda, Jeff? Yeah. Anything else you need to tell us at this point or advise us or warn yeah. us? I believe we've, uh, <laughs> okay. we've covered all the, the tripping <laughs> hazards with the MSBA and um, we've covered the, all the communications. <clears throat> Those are the main points. So after tonight, we'll get the uh, minutes which are approved, certified over to the MSBA in the response to comments. And should be okay. Good. If I need to initial uh, the minutes as approved tonight or anything like that, let me know and I'll do that it's for the town clerk. So. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. Well, so, well, well, uh, we have other business. Other business. Have a couple of yeah, questions. Good. Anything <laughs> else? Um, well, typically, no when we're in this lull, we want to start planning for the next stage. When design development is going to start, negotiation of the OPM contract by Ralph, negotiation of the architect's contract by Ralph and the OPM, and also the submission to the state for the CM at risk process. So when and where and how will that all fit in so that we don't lose a day once we're able to proceed? Well, the CM and risk process, we're going to get on right away. So we're going to start that application. Um, I'll contact Ralph about negotiating our contract. Last time it was Mike and Ralph that did it. I don't know if you want to. It's up to you guys. I yeah. a point. And then um, likewise, we'll do the same thing with DRA. Good. We have that built into the timeline of town meeting, town ballot, yeah. and, and so that the earliest we can start design development, we're already prepared and negotiated yeah. and contracted. Yeah. Yep. It will be all set by then. Not maybe not the IG, maybe not the CM, but certainly our contracts. Well, in fact, that was the other point. How can we get the IG approval in time to get the CM selection process started, so that we can have them on board? at the beginning of DD or sooner. Okay, you have to stop using these letters. <laughs> Design development. IG. Uh, Inspector General. Oh, Remember we applied for permission to use construction manager at risk. Secret architect. I know. <laughs> and but DD John's is right. design development. You yes. know that yes. one. Yes. Uh, yeah, at so each so of the not other. Dunkin Donuts. <laughs> right, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> John's right. At each of the other critical milestones, we had things lined up so that on day one, we were, or soon after day one, we're ready to launch into it. So we definitely want to do that again with your help. So. We'll, we'll be able to be ready for that. We'll get the IG application going now. And then um, the IG does have 60 days if they take it. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, while that's happening, we'll get the RFS for the, for the RFQ for the CMs going. And then when they give the go ahead, you can actually. Are you do gonna have two step RFQ and RFS? Yeah, yeah. no, an RFQ or and an RFP. Right. Yes. Yeah, two yeah. step. Okay. So. I know that last. You're gonna have two. <laughs> well, there's request for proposal. It is two steps. Request for qualification. Do you have to go through RFQ? You first? have to do two steps. Yeah. Okay. So we would do two steps. We can do them at the same time as waiting for the IG's office, and then you know be able to. Well, again, if we're going CM, we might as well get maximum benefit and yeah, having them no, I on agree. Yep. Yep. sooner at the earliest point possible. Yes, yep, yep. So we'll move on that right now. We'll, we'll draft the end. Because there is still the possibility the IG will refuse this and we have to go out to right. bid, and that blows up the schedule. Right. And it changes the reimbursement, too. Good. Thanks, John. And as far as the town steps, I think we're lined up to execute everything after September 30th approval, given that we're meeting with the selectmen next week and Pam's initiating meeting with the finance team. I know that's in your hands. <laughs> I was going to ask if the engineering firm is working on it. Yeah. Mike, why don't you... Uh, I, uh, this yeah. is a, a, another, again, on a new topic. Um, Jeff and Tim. Since the, the, the site of the new school um, will not obviously support a private septic system as such. It is my understanding that we have to, <coughs> we, the engineering firm that's doing this for us has to draft a letter to the, the uh, DPW director uh, saying, because of the soil conditions, because of this, because of this, because you have the capacity, because it's a, it's a template. Uh, but <coughs> it should be done sooner rather than later. <coughs> Because I, I wouldn't want to get to town meeting and somebody says, hey, where's all the stuff going to go and not know at that point. 
Um, I, I, I don't think it's a big, big deal, but it will, it will become a big deal if we don't do it. And I'm hoping the, the engineering firm has, has started down that path. But, you know, perhaps we get an update at our next meeting, see where we are with yeah. that. And, um, yeah. I know there are several out there that the developers have applied for it, and, and perhaps the engineering firm could talk to Elaine Lazarus. She knows the format. And, uh, but it is the DPW director that gets to make those heavy decisions. Right. Uh, thank you, Mike. And uh, Jeff, there was an email, uh, or there was a meeting with the permitting team, I think back in July, mm -hmm. ahead of the July 29th meeting. And there were specific actions for follow-up from that meeting. So I think included in that is what Mike's talking about and maybe Correct. one or two others. So yeah, let's get those right. back in the forefront. Good, thank you, Mike. That's it. Any other business? Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. Second. thank you, John Weaver. Okay, seconded by everybody. Mike, Mike Shepard. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.